Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into our latest opinion poll tracker video. So here we go again, trying to bring you more opinion polling uh, data. We do these once a month where we look at uh, opinion polls from the previous month. So in this case, there'll be the opinion polls during um, March 2024 and the latest prediction from electoral calculus that uh, those opinion polls are based upon. We'll have a look at the very latest Ipsos Mori poll as well, that's just dropped uh, today. Pretty grim news for the Conservatives. Party, uh, that one. Now, I'll get on that for you in a moment. Just say that if you're enjoying our vlogs on the channel, please you like, share, and subscribe. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that. Right, well, let's move over to electoral characters then. Have a look at their latest prediction for the uh, next UK chair election. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one. Bong! <laughs> and there it is. Current prediction. Uh, Labour majority, 266. That's virtually unchanged from last month. It's about six uh, seats up. So let's very quickly go through uh, that prediction then. Oh, uh, as I say, the headline is Labour majority, 266. Um, now we've got uh, 2019 votes and seats just here. Party column there. A member predicted uh, votes and uh, seats just here within the margin for error. So the Conservatives on a predicted share of a vote of just 23.6. I didn't say degrees there, because of the day job, 23.6% of the <laughs> vote always got the weather on my mind, you see. Um, no, that's absolutely, absolutely atrocious, though, because so it's better probably anywhere near 23.6% in general election. It would be absolute wipeout and oblivion. So you'll not be surprised to see the central prediction has them down as low as just 90 seats um, under 100. There is a margin of error, of course, so at the high end, they could be as high as 250. I think they take that, given uh, current polling. At the low end, they could be as low as 32. <coughs> Excuse me, as far as Labour is concerned, they are on a predicted share of vote of 43.3%, so virtually 20% uh, above the Conservatives on a central um, seat share of 458. The high end, they could be as high as 536. At the low end, they could be down to 339. Note, even at their lowest end, Within margin for error, they still have an overall majority of to above three to six. They need to form an overall majority government. Liberal Democrats on ten point two percent of the predicted vote. That's actually down on what they got in uh, twenty nineteen, but still gives them a central prediction of fifty seats. That's because the Conservatives are so low, and the assumption would be there's a lot of tactical voting going on, so um, that's where uh, Labour voters will vote tactically uh, for the Liberal uh, Democrat candidate to get the Conservatives out or stop them winning. Uh, within margin of error, they could be as high as 62. Within the margin of error on the low side, they could be as low as 20. Note, the central prediction for the Liberal Democrats on 50 is above the lowest end of the range for the Conservatives on 32. So if the Conservatives will have to have a particularly bad night and fall to their lowest end of the range with a margin for error, the Liberal Democrats would actually replace them as the official opposition to the Labour government. Blimey, that would be dramatic, wouldn't it? Um, reform on a prediction share of vote of 12.1% of the vote. Uh, which gives them a central prediction of no seats. That seems very unfair, doesn't it? Just wait, but first past the post works and, you know, doesn't, um, or penalises new and up-and-coming party within parties, within margin for error, at the low end, of course, no seats. At the high end, though, they could get 22. Uh, and then, of course, we have got the, um, and, of course, we have got, so it would be interesting if Reform got 22, and uh, the Conservatives went down to 32. So if the Conservatives reform, formed a coalition, that would get them to 52. And say the Liberal Democrats got 50, you just, the Conservatives plus reform could just make up the official opposition. But they would have to, you know, have a formal and official merger or something. Um, always fascinating to think about the possibilities within uh, polling, you know, within the margin for error. That would be very, very, very unlikely, of course. Greens on a central prediction of 5.5, 5, 
would give them a percent of vote, would give them a separate list of two seats. At the high end, they could be tied to four seats. At the low end, they could lose the one seat they have and go down to no seats. SNP on 3.5%, central prediction of 28 seats. The high end, so that's about half, that's about losing half of what, uh, just over half, I think, of the seats they currently have. The high end, they could be as high as 44, at the low end, they could be as low as 10. A lot of those will be going to Labour, how, hence helping to boost the Labour score overall. Applied on four seats, uh, and could be on, on four seats at the high end, could be on one seat at the low end. And of course, got the Dorman Irish parties down here. So uh, that gives us a Labour an overall majority of 266. That's way above what they got in both the 1997 and 2001 landslide elections. I would suggest that reform very unlikely to poll 12% in the UK general election. I could be wrong about that, but I would kind of half the reform vote and give a lot of that back to the Conservatives. Not all of it, you know, to, quite a bit of that would go back to the Conservatives. So in reality, the Conservatives, if you take six off reform and put it to the Conservatives, um, the Conservatives will pro well, it would, so you take six off um, reform, but probably only give four back to the Conservatives, actually, because not everybody would vote. Some people would stay at home and, and whatnot. Um, nevertheless, I think the Conservatives probably in a general election would be more in the upper 20s, maybe. Um, and I think you can also take a couple of percent off the Greens and give that back to Labour, though. So kind of offsets itself between the overall Labour and uh, Conservative scores. So uh, there you go. That's the central prediction from Electoral Council's this month. Let's have a look at the opinion polls that that's based on. There's been lots of them in, uh, <laughs> in March as well. So uh, we start down here with the first poll, which was with Savanta giving Labour a 17% lead. Um, Labour on 44% of the vote, Conservatives on 27% of the vote. We had a Yuga poll. Uh, Yuga, you know, shown a very, very, very large Labour lead. So they had a Yuga, got, Yuga, Yuga poll just here, which gave uh, Labour 27 percent lead. They had Labour on 47 percent of the vote and the Conservatives on just 20 percent of a vote. That would be really, really atrocious, of course, for the um, Conservatives. I think that's almost the lowest uh, that Conservatives have during March. But there is people polling, which actually have the Conservatives under 20 percent on 18 percent of the vote. Con uh, Labour are on uh, 46 and overall Labour lead of 28 percent of the vote. This column just here is the form, uh, by the way, which is quite interesting. Notice that many of the polls have reform in um, in the teens, actually. So, yeah, I've got some polls a bit, a little bit lower. Servatia, for example, has uh, reform on 9%. Still managed to give, because, uh, give uh, Labour a 19% lead, though, 26% Conservatives, 45% Labour. Um, and uh, you have 11% just here with Savannah. Uh, for reform, but other polls have uh, reformed quite a bit higher than that. For example, we've got YouGov um, just here, which uh, had uh, reform on 15% of the vote. Conservatives dropped to 19% of the vote with uh, YouGov in that poll. Labour on 44% of the vote. So it seems like the higher... It looks like um, the, the number of Conservative to Labour switchers has more or less... Um, uh, stop, you know, the people that are going to uh, intend to switch from Labour to, uh, from Conservative to Labour, you know, they've made their decision and, and they've made their move. It's the reform or the Conservative to reform um, switches that uh, seem to be dragging the Conservatives ever lower into the low 20s and possibly even into the teens percent. So the overall Labour lead possibly isn't widening that much um, over the Conservatives, although of course the lower the Conservatives go, even if the Labour even if the Labour share isn't changing that much, even if it's mostly Conservative to reform, um, overall it has a net benefit for uh, Labour in terms of their uh, in terms of their lead. Uh, a few more polls. Let's have a look. So we have a very interesting MRP poll. That's something that's a little bit different. That's a base. That's a constituency uh, based poll looking at. You know, individual constituencies. That gave Labour a 17% lead, predicted that the Conservatives would get an absolute hammering in the uh, constituencies, particularly in the uh, marginals as well. 
Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, really, really grim month again in terms of polling for, uh, for the uh, Conservatives, obviously. And uh, Labour will be very ecstatic, I think. But uh, their lead continues to hold steady for uh, yet another month. So this is how the overall opinion poll graph is looking. Um, notice Labour very, very steady. Their trend line is very, very steady. They reached their high point for this Parliament back in the autumn of 2022, around the time of the Trust budget um, and, and all of the uh, stuff that went on with that. Uh, Rishi, and uh, Serge's lowest point was uh, around here, or we thought it was, or we'll about that in a second. Um, then Rishi Sinat became Prime Minister. The Labour League dropped a little bit, but still stayed very steady, somewhere in the mid 40s percent. The Serge's went up a little bit um, from the low 20s, like the mid 20s. They've generally been holding quite steady between the two parties for uh, for the interim period through 2023 and 2024, particularly Labour holding very, very steady, sometimes ticking up, sometimes ticking down a little bit, but very, very, very steady with the uh, Labour trend line. But look what's happening with the Conservatives, quite alarming, I think, for Conservative supporters, because this is the point in the Parliament where you probably start to expect to see signs of swing back to the government. So we've talked about this in a video uh, last year, we'll probably talk about it again before the election. But the idea of swing back is that you will typically get a swing back to the governing party through the closing uh, months of a uh, parliament. So, uh, and that's the case whether it's Labour or Conservative, but it tends to be more dramatic with Conservative governments um, that reach quite unpopular levels in the, in the middle of the term. But anyway, despite that historical precedent, we are not seeing any sign of swing back. In fact, going the other way, the Conservatives are continuing to drop. Their trend line is continuing to drop, and it's almost now on a par, actually, trend line with, uh, with, with Benadir, you know, with autumn 2022. Possibly still ever so slightly above that, but really more or less on a par now with what happened in 2022. And that's not happening because of Labour gaining support. All of the, as I said, all of the um, Conservative to uh, Labour switching looks like it's happened and taken place. That is happening, that drop is happening because of the uh, Conservative to Reform switchers. So we see Reform's trend line here crossing over the uh, Liberal Democrats, which of course is the yellow line. So in terms of polling, not in terms of seats, of course, but in terms of polling, Reform is now uh, the third biggest party and has overtaken the uh, Liberal Democrats. And all of that is happening at the expense of the uh, Conservative Party. Green's also showing ever such a tiny little tick up there. And uh, the Liberal Democrats not really doing uh, a great deal. You know, they look pretty flat at the moment. So, yeah, all of the action, all of the interest, really, is what's going on in terms of uh, reform and conservative. But I say the net beneficiary, ultimately, is Labour, because they continue to hold steady. And so the lower the conservatives go, the bigger the Labour lead will get. Government approval, uh, or disapproval, uh, continues to uh, look really, really bad. This is Hugo's tracker. So uh, we see on the latest uh, poll from YouGov that 68% of uh, the British public are disapproving of this government, 14%, just 14% disapproving, and the number of people disapproving of the government continues to be underneath those but don't even know whether they approve or disapprove of the government or not. And as I keep saying, that's always a really bad sign for any government that goes, um, you know, under the don't knows in terms of their approval or in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of approval, you know, that is always uh, a really, really, really bad sign. So the government remains extremely unpopular. Uh, right, so we had a, a, a very interesting poll from Ipsos today. And we'll talk about this, I suppose, next month. We'll do next month track of video. But I just wanted to finish with this. Ipsos, Mar Ipsos probably Mori, or Ipsos Mori, now they're just Ipsos, um, is our oldest and, uh, you know, oldest uh, pollster. I would say our oldest and most rival pollster, but, you know, other poll polling companies would dispute that. So let's just say they're our oldest opinion polls pollster. They have uh, Labour on 44%, which is actually down three. 
from the poll that they did last month. But look what's happened to the Conservatives. They are on 19%. In this poll released today, under 20% of the vote with Ipsos. That's absolutely atrocious. That is down one from the 20% they had with Ipsos last month. Uh, we've got the Liberal Democrats on 8%. That's down one from uh, last month. Uh, Greens on 9%. That's up one. But look at Reform on 13%. Up five from uh, where they was with Ipsos last month. Um, again, how seriously we can take this in terms of general election? I mean, I'd be very surprised if the Green Party polled 9% of the vote in a general election, so you could reduce that quite a bit and give it to Labour. So, in that circumstance, Labour would be like in the upper 40s. And I'd be very surprised if Reform got 30%, but 13%, but I could be wrong about that. Um, no, if you were to give, like, five or six back to the Conservatives for Reform, um, then that gets them up into the middle 20. But you'd still have a huge gap between Conservatives and Labour, even if that was the case. So, um, you know, really, really quite a dramatic poll. They have found that 75% are dissatisfied with uh, Rishi, compared to 16% that are satisfied with him. Um, 56% are dissatisfied with Keir Starmer, which is something that we've seen throughout this parliament. So Keir Starmer has never and continues to really not set the world alight in terms of his popularity. It really is the unpopularity of the Conservative Party and, you know, the Conservative leaders that, that is, uh, that's done the damage. Um, this is not 1997, you know, this is not Tony Blair, uh, as he had, had his most, um, popular you know it's nothing like that what we saw back in 1997 in terms of Keir Starmer's own uh popularity or I should say unpopularity really only 25 percent um are satisfied with him 15 56 percent are dissatisfied with him so he's net he's negative you know he's negative but of course it's net uh, uh it's net in terms of what's happening with Rishi that counts and Rishi Sinek is far more unpopular than, than Keir Starmer but Keir is not and hasn't been continues not to do so setting the world like as I've explained that could be trouble when when if when uh, I think it is a case of when Keir Starmer becomes prime minister because he's not starting with a huge amount of popularity a huge amount of goodwill seemingly he might might surprise people, of course, on the upside if that they they're not expecting much from him, seemingly. Um, but it's probably bad news, you know, when he actually becomes prime minister and Labour is in government. That could well be a sign of trouble to come. But at the moment, all the focus on the Conservatives and on Rishi. The overall government uh, 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 is very, very popular with Ipsos and Wales. Same as what we saw with YouGov, really 84% disapproving of the government and or dissatisfied with the government and just 10% satisfied uh, with the government. And based on that part, I saw this tweet, which was quite interesting. This is from Dr. Will Jennings. I'll, I'll link to Dr. Will's Twitter, or X, um, in the description with this video. So it's compiling lowest government approval by Prime Ministers with both Murray, Ipsos, and also Gallup, which is quite interesting. So we see the latest poll uh, down here with just 10% approving of the uh, 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 British Sunak and British Sunak's government, which is not the worst we've seen. We actually saw... The worst we've seen is actually uh, Theresa May, uh, eight per just eight <laughs> percent her the deer uh, approved of her government. But notice how um, the uh, uh, prime minister and the government tend to get more unpopular um, uh, as we get closer to the modern era. So we've got uh, actually this government. His lowest government approval was thirty one percent. Rishi would bite <coughs> at his hand off uh, to you know to take that. Um, Churchill from 51 to 55, his lowest approval was 40%. Anthony Eden, who ended up uh, going because of the Suez crisis, his lowest approval rating was 34%. Again, um, Rishi would absolutely be biting his hand off. We come into the 60s, Macmillan, his uh, lowest approval was 30%. Yeah, not too bad by his strength. Standards. Douglas Hume, who took over from Macmillan and uh, took the Conservatives to defeat in 1964 against Wilson. His uh, lowest approval was just 36%. He wasn't around for very long, though. Um, Harold Wilson, between 1964 and 1970, his uh, lowest um, approval was 17%. So that, for that era, that is quite unpopular. 
Um, and Edward Heath, uh, between 70 and 74, his lowest approval was 22%. Wilson, between 74 and 76, was 27%. Again, these aren't too bad compared to the really atrocious numbers that we see in the modern era. Um, uh, Jim Callahan, his lowest point, presumably during winter discontent, was 17% approval. Margaret Thatcher, who we think of as eventually becoming really, really unpopular, her lowest approval was 16%, but notice it is getting worse as we're going along. Um, John Major hit 8% approval. That was on a par with Theresa May, actually. Um, and that would have been in the middle of the 1990s, I suppose. Tony Blair's lowest approval, probably after the Iraq War, um, was 22%. Gordon Brown, uh, 16%. David Cameron, 24%. Uh, approval, Boris Johnson 14% 14, 14 approval Liz Truss 11% approval and then we finish up again with Rishi um, to that at 10% approval so I mean you know you do have variations within within the trend of course so make John Major 8% Approval back in the 90s was absolutely terrible. That was in the modern era. That, that will probably be in mind as digits, maybe. I don't know. But you can see that the trend is generally there, can't you? But the further back you go, the more popular the leaders, the more popular the governments were. I suspect there's various reasons, reasons for that. Possibly it was more deferential time. Um, people are much more politically aware now, I would suspect, maybe, um, but also more apathetic as well, because more people voted in general elections, like back in the 1950 general election, I think the turnout was about 80%, now, uh, we, we, you know, we think we're doing quite well if we get to 70% turnout, so, um, no, so, so, yeah, there are various reasons about probably rolling news, 24-hour news would have an impact on the popularity or unpopularity of the government, and maybe the politicians have just got worse but uh, that's not for me to judge let you know in the comments why you think governments back in the 50s and 60s and possibly in the 70s were more popular you know the governments and the, and the prime ministers and the politicians why were they more popular back in the 50s 60s and 70s to what we've seen in the modern era let me know what you think in the comments everyone but anyway coming back to electoral calculus so the latest prediction for uh, april 2024 based on the opinion poll in march 2024 it's a labor majority of 266 that is a record historic landslide majority for labor and uh, we shall see, I suspect, when we do next month's tracker, based on April's opinion polls, the situation might have got even worse for the Conservatives, but we shall see. Right, well, if you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much everyone for doing that. And uh, we're going to have more vlogs coming up for you very, very soon. But for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.